This video is a guide for anyone who's interested in purchasing a detailed airbrush. Since these airbrushes are expensive, I thought this may be helpful for those of you who are interested in picking one up. I'll be covering my four favorite detailed airbrushes, which includes two Iwata Custom Microns, a GSI Creos PS771, three Badger Sotars 2020s, and two Harder and Steambeck Infinities. The difference between a normal airbrush and a detailed airbrush is that a detailed airbrush has a smaller needle and nozzle combo, which allow for a tighter spray pattern. When we compare the two spray patterns next to each other, we can see that there's a difference, although it's very subtle. The Iwata Eclipse, which has a 0.35 millimeter nozzle, has a slightly larger spray pattern, and the Iwata Micron with a 0.18 millimeter nozzle has a smaller spray pattern and an angle that's more acute. Looking at these two angles side by side, we can see that the difference is very subtle. Any airbrush will give you a fine line if you reduce the paint and hold it close to the subject that you're painting. The difference with the detailed airbrush is that you could do this from a little bit farther away and you don't have to worry about breaking the needle and you just have a little bit more control over the process. The first detail airbrush we're going to look at is the Sotar 2020 made by Badger. The Sotar has a 0.2 millimeter nozzle and is also the least expensive out of any of these airbrushes, coming in right around $100. As I said in one of my previous videos, the Sotar is one of my favorite airbrushes. For the price, you can't beat it. It has a great spray pattern and the trigger is extremely responsive. If any part of an airbrush becomes stuck and is difficult to remove by hand, I recommend using these soft draw pliers, which I'll have a link for down below. They do a great job of taking apart an airbrush and they don't scratch the paint or the chrome since the jaw is made of a, a soft nylon. Out of any of these airbrushes, the Sotar is my least favorite to take apart and clean. The parts are really small, they're easy to lose, and they're difficult to put back together, especially this trigger assembly. The nozzle itself is made of about three or four parts, and it's difficult to break down and clean and put back together with making sure that there's no leaks. Um, but over time, you get used to it, and you know, for for the type of airbrush it is, it does such a great job at spraying that I don't mind this, and I've gotten used to it. I've had this one for almost about 10 years now, and I love it. It's a great airbrush. If you're looking to pick up your first detail airbrush, the Sotar 2020 is my number one recommendation because for the price, you can't beat it, and I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. The next airbrush up is the Infinity by Harder and Steambeck. In my opinion, this airbrush is the highest build quality out of any of these. The original one had a nickel coating, which tended to wear off where your thumb was. So the new one, the CR Plus, was updated with a chrome coating. This version is the 2-in-1, so it has a 0.15mm nozzle and a 0.20. Right now, I have the 0.2mm nozzle in. And you can see you put this little cap on the front, which protects the needle. And it's really nice because you could just pull it off when you want to get closer and clean the needle by hand. The color cups are removable on this airbrush, so you can replace the smaller one with a larger one. But what I like more is using this small little cap that you could screw in. That way you can only put a few drops of paint in, but your finger has much more room to move. The rear handle also has a trigger stop, and this one's kind of unique because you can press it in and pull it out at any depth, unlike the other ones where you have to screw them in and screw them out. Breaking down this airbrush is an absolute breeze. It's so easy to do. Use this little tool to remove the back spring assembly, and it all comes out in one piece, and it's very simple to break down from here. The trigger assembly and guide are connected and come out as one piece. And just like the other airbrushes in this video, this back part unscrews to control the tension of the spring, and once you remove it, you can pull out the spring and the spring guide. I'm not removing any of the nozzles in these airbrushes because, in my experience, that's when they get broken. It's best to try to keep the airbrush as clean as possible, rinse it out after every use, and the nozzle should stay fine. The Infinity is priced at around $300, give or take. The next airbrush up is the Iwata Custom Micron. I own two of these airbrushes. The first one was the Custom Micron CMB, and this one is the Iwata Takumi. The Microns are the most expensive airbrushes in this video. They come in around $400 to $500 each, um, but they also offer the most amount of detail, and in my opinion, are the best airbrushes in this video. The rear handle also has a trigger stop, which are kind of pointless in my opinion, but it's still cool to have on there. And also you can screw on your needle protector on the back here so that you don't lose it. Just like the Infinity, this brush is very simple to break down. And on the side here, there's a small window. And what this does is it allows you to adjust the tension on the needle. There's a little PTFE seal in there. And by either tightening it or loosening it, you can control the tension on the needle. 
The purpose of that seal is to prevent paint from leaking back into the body of the airbrush. Every airbrush has that seal, but you have to access it through the back of the airbrush. This way you just have uh, easy control to adjust it when you need to. And here are the two side by side. You can see that the Takumi, uh, the trigger is slightly closer to the nozzle. So when you're working, you could really choke up and get nice and close to, to the work you're working on. And the last airbrush is the GSI Krios. The model I have is the PS771. I feel like this airbrush has a bunch of different names. Sometimes it's labeled as Mr. Hobby or Mr. Airbrush. But if you just look online for Krios PS771, you'll find it. It has a valve at the bottom for controlling and limiting air pressure on Iwatas. These are called MAC valves, which stands for micro air control. And the handle also has a knob for controlling the distance of the needle. I don't know how it is for anyone else, but I'm not a huge fan of the MAC valve, the micro air control valve at the front. I just, I don't think it's needed because I'm sitting right next to my compressor all the time and I can adjust it right next to me. Um, so again, I, I think it's another part that's not really needed. I guess it's cool to have, but you know, it's, it's another part that could clog or, or leak. So I'd prefer if it didn't have it. Breaking this airbrush down is pretty much exactly the same as the Micron. Everything's easy to remove and put back together, and the build quality of this is excellent. It's on par with the custom Micron, and at half the price of around $200, $220, this airbrush is a great bargain. So let's get into painting now. This part is going to be slightly subjective because I'm going to be talking about my opinions on the feel of each airbrush. Uh, I'm starting here with the Badger Sotar 2020 and I'm using Createx Illustration Colors, thin down with a few drops of distilled water and strain through a paint filter. As soon as I start spraying with this airbrush, I'm reminded of why I love the Sotar so much. The trigger is incredibly responsive. You pull back the tiniest bit, paint starts to come out. The spray pattern of this airbrush is definitely the widest of any of these. It doesn't spray as tight as the Micron, but it still does such a great job because the control is there. My suspicion is that although this airbrush has a small needle and nozzle at 0.2, it doesn't have the thin tapering that the Micron and GSI Creos has, where it kind of forces the air in a very sharp area to spray a thin line. This one sprays a little bit wider and this, it, it seems to use more air than the other ones, even at the same PSI, but it's still still spraying a great amount of detail, and it's much tighter than the Iwata Eclipse, which has a 0.35 millimeter nozzle. All these small Bob Ross style landscapes are one inch by one inch, so they're very small and difficult to do if you're not using a detail airbrush, although you still can with, with something like an Iwata Eclipse. This next part, I'm writing out the letters of each airbrush very slowly. This is difficult to do. If you want a thin line with an airbrush, you really want to move it quickly. So I'm going very slow here, trying to see how much control I have, and the Sotar is doing a great job. The spray wasn't absolutely perfect, but I have zero complaints with this. Did a great job. Job. Starting and stopping an airbrush in small areas is one of the most difficult things to do. So if you're writing small letters, it's best to either write in script where you're spraying the whole time or you're doing it very quickly. I'm just making up these landscapes as I go along. So I'm going to try to repeat that first one for these other three airbrushes. So now we're switching over to the Harder and Steemek Infinity CR+. Plus. On this model, I have the 0.2 millimeter nozzle installed. And right away, I can tell that the spray pattern is tighter than the Badger Sotar, and it feels a lot closer to a Micron or GSI Krios. Now, while this airbrush has an amazing spray pattern, which is nice and tight and smooth, the problem I have with it is the trigger control. For me, the most important part of airbrush painting is a responsive trigger. I want to make sure that when I pull it back a certain amount, that it always sprays the same amount of paint. Now I have two models of this, the original Infinity and this is a CR Plus, and in both I have a .15 and a .2 millimeter nozzle. And with both, I always find that I'll pull back to a certain spot and the paint won't come out and then I'll pull it halfway and it'll spit. And it just, it doesn't seem to have the control. Every time I pull back, it seems to want to start spraying at a different point. I've tried all different types of paint. I've tried um, uh, food coloring that's doesn't have any pigment in it it's just colored water and I get the same thing I mean, I'm no designer or engineer but I, I feel like there may be something wrong with the way that this pulls paint from the cup it's just not as responsive as the other airbrushes although it does spray an amazing thin line 
Once this airbrush starts spraying, it's just as good as a Micron. It gives you a nice thin line and it sprays very smoothly. The problem, like I said, is starting and stopping, which for me is really everything with an airbrush. This next airbrush is the GSI Creos, and right away I can tell that it's, it's spraying great. It's spraying very similar to the Infinity. It's also spray similar to the Micron. It, um, it does a great job at atomizing the paint. It's very smooth, and what I like is the trigger control is excellent. Spraying white paint is usually the most difficult for any airbrush because it, it tends to be a thicker pigment. And um, it, it's with the clouds here, it's spraying just fine. It seems to be doing a good job spraying where I want to. When I pull the trigger back slightly, it gets paint just like the Sotar. Um, so I'm very pleased with this. If you want a cheaper version of a Micron, this airbrush is great. There's, there's nothing wrong with it and you won't be disappointed at all with it. If you compare the nozzles or the head assemblies, of the GSI Creos and the Micron, you'll notice that they're very similar. They both taper down from the body to a very sharp point at the end where the needle comes out. And like I said, I'm not an engineer. I have no idea how these are designed, but I feel like that has something to do with how it forces the air out to spray over the nozzle, create that Venturi effect and release the paint, atomize it into the air. And it just sprays it so smooth and it's such a thin line over a distance, so you don't have to be so close to the work to get a sharp line. It's just very easy to use and to control, and if you haven't used one yet, you, you definitely should. You should pick one up. If you don't want to pay full price for the Micron, this GSI Creos is a great alternative. Again, for $200, $220, great price. Like I said before, writing small letters where you're starting and stopping is without a doubt the most difficult thing to do with an airbrush because the airbrush is just kind of floating in midair. Um, but this airbrush, like the others, did a great job. I had no problem with the control. It seemed to do just fine. Okay, so moving on to our last airbrush is the Iwata Micron. Like I said, I have two of these. I have the CMB, and right here I'm using the new one, which is the Iwata Micron Takumi. I almost wish this airbrush doesn't spray as well as it does just because of the price. It's, it's hard to recommend an airbrush that's about four or five times the price of any other one. But this, this airbrush is incredible. In my opinion, it has to be the best airbrush ever made. This or the, um, the other one I have, the Custom Micron CMB. It just sprays perfect. It sprays very thin lines. Uh, the control is excellent. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. It's, it's hard to show in the video, but you have to trust me on this one. I pull back the tiniest amount, like a millimeter back, I start to get paint, which is, is amazing. I mean, it's just, it responds absolutely perfect to any little movement you get paint. It is, remember, it's a 0.18 millimeter nozzle, just like the Creo, so they do tend to clog, but the solution to that is a high quality paint. Uh, like I said before, on this one, I'm using um, Createx Illustration Colors, which has a very fine grind to the, the pigments. And if you thin it down with a little bit of 4011 or 4012 reducer um, or water, which I like uh, the most, it, it does a great job. Unfortunately, the biggest con with this airbrush is, of course, the price. I paid $490 for it here in the United States. And, um, you know, compared to other airbrushes, that's, that's quite a premium. But for what it is, I think it's a good price because it really, it sprays amazing. And another nice thing about it, too, is anytime there's a problem with it, like I've had with my other ones, I could send it over, um, over, I believe they're in Portland, and they fix it up for maybe 40 or 50 bucks and send it back, and it's working like new. So I like to keep my videos short, and this one is definitely running over that time limit. But all these airbrushes are amazing. I recommend all of them. If I had to rate them, the Iwata Micron is the number one, followed by the GSI Creos, then the Sotar, and the Infinity at the bottom. But like I said, they're all excellent. You can't go wrong with any of them. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.